Welcome to the Head Start Show, where I, Shivad Singh, interview the most successful and inspiring young people in the world. This is done with the aim to inspire and fuel you to take action on your dream. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Part 1. Inspire! So I'm very excited for our special guest. We had to reschedule it a few times, but yeah. how's it, Dominic? Very good and you. Fantastic. So, for those of you who don't know, Dominic Oboikovitz is the co-founder of Giant Box and Amplify Games. He is the lead developer and designer of two games that he created with, his, with him and his team. Oh, and did I forget to mention that he's just 22. So I gave the Head Starters a teaser trailer about you. So walk us through your journey and tell us how you got here. So I actually grew up in Limpopo, which is quite far from technology and gaming and everything. And uh, I was actually born in Austria and Vienna. And my parents said, no, we don't want him to grow up in Europe in an apartment. We want to go and live in Africa and give him <laughs> the, a big bush outdoorsy lifestyle. And then, uh, you know, I proceeded to stay inside and play video games all day to disappoint them as every child must to their parents. And then eventually I, I really fell in love with video games very early on. I think I had them since I was four years old. And when I was in grade two, which is like eight years old, I was pretty set on becoming a video games designer. I had no idea what that meant. There weren't anybody that taught video game design at university level, any of that kind of stuff at that time. But I knew I wanted to do it. I didn't know how to get there. And I thought if I just keep Googling it, I'll eventually find something. And I eventually did. I found a free to download game engine called Unity, just as it was coming up. I'm actually really lucky because Unity is now the world's largest and most used game engine for mobile game development. They used it to make Pokemon Go. It's one of the most popular game engines in the world right now. And uh, I got, it, got on it really early, so I got really lucky there. And then I've just used that to develop my games and I put them on iOS first when I was 16 and then made a little bit of profit from that. And then I <laughs> used that to hire an artist in Canada. And then we, we developed a game called Pixel Boy and we put that on Steam, which we did that through Greenlight, where we took many hundreds of days to get the requisite number of votes. And uh, yeah, we made that, sold that, did really well, and now started a new company. Wanted to you know, have a company completely in South Africa, not worry about Canada and have all the overseas uh, rigmarole to deal with. And then we started developing this new game called Polygod, and we've been working on it for a year. We got greenlit in 14 days on Steam, and so what uh, does Greenlight mean? So what Greenlight is, is it's Steam's crowdfunding service where a whole bunch of people will vote if they want a game or not. And if you get enough votes, Steam will give you a publishing deal. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's quite awesome. So, so how did all these ideas come about? Did an apple also fall on your head? <laughs> no, it's actually it's an incredibly gradual process. Uh, what, what I try to do, at least from my games design perspective, is I try to chase technology. So what I'll do is I'll first develop something cool in code or something cool mathematically, and then I'll go, okay, how can I use this mathematical idea to make a video game? And working through that with Pixel Boy, you know, I was testing out random generation and how we could randomly generate environments and give people varied experiences without having to design the experiences yourself. And then using that technology, we moved forward with uh, Polygod and we've built on it since then. And what, what Polygod's unique selling point is that it's also randomly generated, but it's also got this unique system where you can create your own weapon. So you take different blessings from all these gods that you meet in game and you'll combine them to create these like combination weapons. And yeah, so it's, it's been a long process of building the technology from scratch, but now we're sitting on a lot of very unique IP that we think uh, can make some really fun games. Sure, the intellectual property, I wouldn't mind buying that one. <laughs> <laughs> and so, how did you become interested in the field of gaming? What, when you know, it's four, did you see a game and you just were hooked since then? That, that's actually an interesting one. Uh, so, when I was growing up, uh, I had a cousin, Jackson, and um, I used to live a K from his house, a kilometer, and he got a PlayStation 1 before anyone else did. <laughs> So I was there every day watching him play PlayStation 1, but he only had one controller. So a lot of the time I was watching him play as opposed to playing myself. Eventually I got to play games and I really loved them and liked them. But that experience of watching games really made me almost analyze them from a very young age. And that made me think about how I would do it if I were to make a game. 
And ever since I started thinking like that, I was just obsessed and I, just, I wanted to make games. But of course, it's incredibly complicated to make games and no adult, you know, that I was near had any idea yeah. how it worked. So, so it, was, it was very strange. I mean, for example, if you look at a book, it's very simple how books get made because yeah. you learn to read and write fairly early on. If you look at a movie, you can even understand how movies are made pretty simple because you look at a camera, you go, okay, camera's still, a video camera makes sense. But you look at a game, you're like, how do they do that? <laughs> Very true. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, so, yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm excited because we're going to get detailed for that so we can steal his IP later in the future. <laughs> so, so, at the moment, you seem like everything is going uh, well for you, but tell us what your biggest challenge was and how did you overcome that? Um, so... Our biggest challenge probably was uh, initially finding funding for, for Polygod and uh, getting everything started. Uh, I got quite lucky because I made a mate of mine, Safian Altalib, at Alan Gray, and he's working on financial investment. And I, when I was telling him about Pixel Boy at the time, he's incredibly interested in the idea and wanted to invest. Pixel Boy ended up uh, selling 36,000 units, and we made quite a good return wow. on investment for our investors. So I told this to Safian and I said, hey, do you want to invest in our next game? And he said, yeah, so, and you know, he's our age, so. So how did, with Pixel Boy, when you started Pixel Boy, how did that start? Did you also have investors before for Pixel Boy? Yes, so with, with Pixel Boy, I actually had a family friend who invested, okay. but, a, but a much smaller amount because yeah. the whole Pixel Boy development process is much less ambitious than Polygod. We're talking a two-dimensional top-down shooting game uh, with a very simple story and progression and I think 20 different power-ups and I think maybe 15 different monsters. And you get Polygod, where we're sitting with like 35 different monsters, 14 different boss fights, 100 different power-ups. It's multiplayer, online, uh, split-screen multiplayer, LAN multiplayer, uh, <laughs> comprehensive single-player, <laughs> random generation, extra characters. So we really, we really scaled it up in every aspect. Sure. So you're, you're taking it to the next level now. Yeah, it's like, I think my philosophy was uh, bite off more than you can chew and then figure out how to chew it later. <laughs> so what would you consider to be your biggest failure? And what, would you, what did you learn from that? Pixel boy. <laughs> okay, um, so so this, is, this is an interesting one. So yeah. towards the end of the Pixel Boy development, uh, I had a bit of a falling out with my partners, which, sure. is, which is why we ended up uh, starting Amplify. And that falling out led to me being cut out of the last design decisions of the game, so I didn't get to have final say on how the game would play. And they tended to uh, skew the game towards more casual players and easier players, and they, they didn't really focus on uh, the, the top 10 or 5% of players, and they didn't focus on that gameplay, which I'd been focusing on. And what happened is the final product that was Pixel Boy wasn't satisfactory in my eyes. So this is, it isn't what the game that I wanted to make. And because of that, I started up to try and make Polygod. And, uh, you know, Pixel Boy still sold well, but, and, you know, the financial success is awesome and it's, it's really nice. But from an artistic perspective, I was unsatisfied. So this is also why I, it kind of changed my philosophy on games design, because I view games as art. And I realized something about art, and that's that you really do need uh, soul creators when it comes to projects. And that if you have maybe two people with conflicting design ideas, it's not necessarily the best for the product. So with uh, Polygod, we've been very strict on following artistic protocols in, in how to make the game fun and, you know, impactful. Oh, wow. At least now you learn that lesson young age. So you won't do that when you're like 50. No, no. <laughs> I want to learn all the lessons now. Yeah. Failure's great. <laughs> hey, Head Starter. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. Check out the playlist for other parts of the episode. If you want to watch the full episode as a podcast, then check out the links below. Oh, and remember to subscribe. Uh, that's awkward.